Ah, it is quiet out here. But you're used to it, though, wouldn't you say, eh, Cobb? Been long enough now? Yes. Well, it's not so quiet with the kinds of stories you have to tell, thank God. Besides, one day I'll meet someone special. I swear it. Well, after all, it's your turn on land tomorrow to dance with the ladies. <laughs> I'm curious. What do you think about McDunn when I leave you out here alone? An old seabird like yourself. Oh, usually on the great mysteries of the sea, purely on the grand questions of this ocean. <laughs> Someone once told me the sea is like the biggest snowflake in the world. It rolls and swells into a thousand shapes and colors, no two alike. Constantly surprises you. You know, I was here alone one night when all the fish of the sea surfaced out there. It was like something forced them up to the bay, sort of trembling even. They stared up at the tower light, gleaming. Red, white, red, white. So I could, of course, see their beady eyes staring up. I tell you, there were so many of them, it even looked like some sort of peacock tail. Dozens of eyes moving out there till midnight. Then, just as suddenly, they slipped away, back into the dark, back into the dark, without even a sound. It was like they had come from miles and miles to worship. Perhaps the tower must have looked like something holy to them. Seventy feet tall and all, with its booming voice. Never happened ever since. But I wonder what they were thinking. Did they believe they were in the presence of a god? Oh, the sea's full of it, all right. For all of our engines and submarines, it'll be dozens upon dozens of years before we've set foot on the real depths of sunken kingdoms down there. You're awfully thoughtful tonight. Well, when the grayness of the sky brings me back to that day, I can feel it. The thickness of the air. Think of it, though. Down there, it's still 300,000 BC. But well, we've spent our time trumpeting around up here, lopping each other's heads off, waging a war. They've been swimming down below, frozen in time from the very beginning. Yes. Well, the world is very old. We've only begun to scratch the surface of this planet. But in time, old chap, time reveals all to us. Cobb, follow me upstairs. There's something I want to show <laughs> What on you. earth could it be, old man? I thought you've shown me every last corner of this dingy hole. Going to show me your hidden stash of verbose poetry. Make sure the light is off so there's no reflection in the plate glass. Like a great big beast, don't she sound like? This mighty eye, a big lonely titan, crying in the night, wailing out to the deeps. I'm here. I'm still here. Yes, I suppose it is rather creepy when you put it that way. You've been here for three months, of course, Johnny, so I best prepare you at this time of year. Something comes to the lighthouse. Oh, like the swarms of fish you mentioned? No, this is something else entirely. I've been putting off telling you. No, go on. You've got my fascination now. You see, if my calendar is marked correctly, then tonight he'll come. You'll have to see him for yourself. Take a seat. I won't go into detail. So then tomorrow, you can pack your duffel and take the motorboat into land and get into your car on the Cape. Should you want to. Wait, hold on. I won't question you, or blame you. It's been three years now since it first came, and this is only the first time someone has been with me to verify what I've seen. What on earth do you- Just wait and watch. Come on, it's been half an hour. Stop being so mysterious. This must be a joke. I'll tell you a story. One day, many years ago, a man walked along and stood to the sound of the ocean, and on the cold sunless shore, said, We need a voice to call across the water, to warn the ships. I'll make one. 
a voice like an empty bed beside you in a long drawn out night, like an empty house when you open the door, and like the trees in the autumn with no leaves, an echo like birds flying south and the forceful power of a cold November wind. I'll make a sound that's so lonely that no one can miss its isolation. Whoever hears it will weep in their souls and they'll know the sadness of eternity and the briefness of life. I made up that story to try and explain why this thing keeps coming back here. The Foghorn reaches out and he comes for it. I'm sure. Very dramatic. Now, why don't you just tell me what we're doing here? Shh! There. Don't you see him? I see it. Something's swimming towards us. The mist. Even with the light, it's hard to see through the shroud. Is that... Is that a head? It's humongous. Its neck must be at least 40 feet, McDunn. Aye, the same dark eyes I remember. The same body and hyperactive tail. I'd wager 90 to 100 feet. It's covered in coral and seaweed. If that thing gets close, even the tip of its large tail could whip us down. Steady boy. But it's unbelievable. It's not unbelievable. We're the unbelievable ones. He's the same soul as who walked ten million years ago. We're the ones who've changed us. I can't quite get a good look at it. The fog keeps going in and around it. Its its eyes are glowing. Is it blinking back in response to our own light? Where did it come from? The dark deeps. He's a dinosaur of some sort. Must be hidden in the deep, deep, what deepest do we do? depths. Isn't that the word, Johnny? The deeps. It says so much. The coldness, darkness. What are we going to do? Our jobs, obviously. He's as big as a destroyer ship. But why us? Why is it here? I see. Yes. The anguish. And now you know why it's here. All year long, Johnny. That poor monster out there. Perhaps he's over a million years old. This one soul, a thousand miles at sea, biding its time. Think of it, what would it feel like to wait that long? Maybe he's the last of his kind. And here the men of land come to build a lighthouse a mere five years ago and wake you up to a kingdom you no longer recognize. The wail of the foghorn comes and goes, so that slowly but surely, you fight the weight of sleep and the sea currents and even the weight of darkness itself. You spend months climbing from those pits, feeling if you rise too fast, too excitedly, then you'll explode. That's how familiar the sound is to that creature. Then, once it finally arrives, he stands out, an skewed lizard, the tallest animal in all of creation, and the lighthouse calling out seemingly purely just to you. Its own neck, as big as your own, with a voice just like your own. The only thing for miles out here that booms remotely as loud as you. So long, millions of years of waiting alone for its kind who will never return. Last year, he swam around, round all night, not coming too near, just puzzled, afraid maybe, maybe a wee bit angry too after traveling so far. But the next day, when the fog finally lifted, the monster swam back off, away from the heat. Perhaps he's been brooding, sulking all this time. It's getting closer. It's eyes. They're like fire and ice. I suppose that's life, though. Someone always out there waiting for something. Someone who was a soul who loves someone more than is returned. And after a while, you grow to resent them so that they can never hurt you anymore. For as great as love is, the darkness is sadly its own comfort. That's it. We have to switch off the light. It's our only chance. It's getting angry. He's just standing there, blinking at us. The horn! Switch on the horn! 
stairs, quick lad. Into the cell. Hurry! Brace yourself! so dark. What is that smell? What time is it? Listen. Listen. He's directly above us. He's truly alone now, isn't he? No one will come for him, and he knows it. The light, the tower, all gone. And to anyone out there, in a boat, they'd never know the difference. This is just our foghorn wailing as if it's the same old sad war it always has. The following noon, the sun beamed down bright yellow when the rescuers came to dig us out of the rubble. It fell apart, a few bad knocks from the waves, and it all crumbled. It's all we could say. The ocean had calmed and the sky was blue. The only trace remaining of the visitor was the great stink of algae covering the debris. The next year they had rebuilt the lighthouse, but by that time I had moved on to a different town with my wife and children. McDunn, on the other hand, remained the stalwart master of the new lighthouse, built with steel-reinforced concrete, just in case. Yeah, I thought I'd drop by. Did he ever come back? No, all gone now. He's learned you can't love anything too deeply in this world. Some people stay the same, but the environment is always changing. He would envy you, I'm sure. What do you mean by that? <sighs> Not everyone can adapt so easily, Johnny. Find others, find love. Some of us just slink back to the old pits of what we're used to. Well, I best get back to work now. It was nice to see you again, though. Wait, McDunn, you're welcome to- Oh, goodbye. He should be gone by now, but it's like nothing ever happened. He's still there. He never really even left. He was always alone, no matter who was there. Written by Moscow J. Styles, Inspired by the short story The Foghorn by Ray Bradbury. Edited by Moscow J. Styles. Johnny Cobb was played by Evelyn Smith. McDunn was played by Moscow J. Styles. All music was created by Kevin McLeod. All sound effects sourced from freesound.org. You have been listening to The Foghorn a small studios production.